Good morning, sweet ones. Um, I just felt it on my heart today. I wanted to get on here and um, not be snarky and sarcastic today, but kind of let you know what's on my heart. And I hope that maybe it, it helps even just one person out there. But um, lately I've just been dealing with, first of all, just kind of like a lot of us, just feeling a little bit down, a little bit blah. But um, I really had a flare up of just all I can describe it as guilt feelings, just feeling guilty, whether it's mom guilt, whether it's human guilt, whether it's guilty that I'm not spending enough time in my relationships or guilty that I'm not devoting enough time to furthering one of my businesses or um, guilty that my kids are too independent or they're not independent enough or am I pouring enough of myself into their education. I don't know. Do you hear myself? Um, I missed, unfortunately, my therapy appointment this week. I usually like to bring y'all little tidbits from my amazing therapist. Um, I was, I'm still not feeling 100% after uh, being sick for weeks, and so I didn't want to, I've been, I was coughing all day Monday, so I didn't want to cough all over her, but my last therapy appointment, I, um, I said, I, I know it, and again, remember that some of our problems that we deal with, yes, absolutely 100%, it is a coming from a place of, of privilege and wealth that we wake up in the morning with decisions to make. And that we um, wake up in the morning with, um, you know, families intact and with jobs that bring us money. And I, I completely understand that and appreciate that. But something that has just been rolling over and over in my mind lately is even good things have weight. Even good things carry weight. And I think internalizing that and bringing that in and saying even good things, even the good decisions I have to make, even decisions like should we take the next step in our adoption journey? Um, should we have another baby? Should we finally buy a house? Should we make this massive move away from family and friends to another state, but for a job that could change our lives? Should I s finally start my business even though I'm terrified? Those decisions are privileged decisions, but they're still heavy and they still carry weight and they still can inflict um, stress and worry and pain on our bodies and on our minds and I was talking to my therapist and uh, a couple weeks ago and I said you know I went over for um, a, a, like a dinner party a football watch party at my best friend's house here in Baltimore my closest friend I have here and I always am super comfortable at her house um, her kids are like my kids um, my kids are her kids maybe um, and I just said, I went over and I, I feel so disappointed in myself because another one of my sweet friends was over there and I felt like I just, I wasn't on. I wasn't Rachel. I felt like I had to force conversation. I felt like um, I wasn't participating in the friendship that night maybe or that I wasn't like a good guest, you know, that I wasn't entertaining enough. I said, I didn't want to go, and but I, I wanted to go. I wanted to be with my friends and be with my husband watching this football game, but... I said I was surrounded by my closest friends here in Baltimore and I hadn't seen them in weeks because we'd been so sick since before Christmas. And I said, I just felt so in a pit, so sad and, and depressed in the middle of my closest friends with my husband there. And I said, I just feel crappy that I felt like I wasn't myself even with my closest friends. And I said, you know, I feel like I'm just going back into that January, February slump. Am I, you know, is my depression coming back or not coming back? I'm, you know, but it, is it flaring up where I need to, to do something with my medication? And, you know, oh, here comes the, the January doldrums again. And she looked at me and she goes, Rachel, you have been sick for weeks, literally weeks. 
Your family's been sick. You didn't get to ho go home for Christmas because of being sick. You're sad and feel guilty and all the other feelings of not seeing your family in months. She goes, you're tired. And then you went over to somebody's house not feeling great. She goes, you're jumping to the conclusion that your your depression is worsening or you're, you know, you're feeling all these very complicated emotions. And she said, you're not listening to your body. Your body is saying, you're tired. You need to take care of yourself. You need more rest. And when she was telling me that in a kind but stern way, it just opened my eyes and I, it's weird, it sounds so basic, right? Like, duh, you were tired for, I mean, you were sick for three weeks. And then, you, you know. But for me, in my mind, I'm clicking back into that old mindset of, um, I always feel a lot of, of guilt, survivor's guilt and stuff like that um, related to my PTSD diagnosis in the cold winter months after Christmas. And um, I think a lot of people out there deal with those same things and flaring up especially around this time and you know I was kind of doing like this in my own self and saying Rachel you're going back you need to you need to activate all your resources you need to you know and and my my therapist was like Rachel like you're sick take care of your body it's maybe not as extreme as that and <clears throat> I just wanted to put that reminder out there that Maybe you're still like, you know, maybe you're, you were sick weeks ago and, and you're still carrying around this crap. <clears throat> and it sounds like I smoke approximately half a pack a day, which I don't, but, um, maybe you're exhausted, um, from just parenting or just life, your job. I've been working a whole lot more lately, um, at the hospital than just my weekends and, it's fun and it's exciting and um, I love being there, but at the same time, it's tiring. And especially when it's on top of, you know, when you essentially have two full-time jobs, you know, and so, or three. And I'm tired. And maybe you're just tired and you have decisions to make and they're really good decisions. They're not, they're not bad decisions, but they're important to you and they carry weight and it's bringing you down. And I think I just wanted to remind you, not just to say, oh, take care of yourself, right? Sometimes, and this has been really hard for me, but sometimes taking care of yourself doesn't mean going and getting a massage or going and getting a manicure, um, going to Starbucks and, and sitting and knitting. Those are all amazing things. Those are definitely, I think those are kind of soul rejuvenating times. Sometimes doing the right thing is having that really hard conversation with family or with a friend, um, with your coworker or with your boss. Something that's really, really uncomfortable or something that's going to be really hard in the moment, but it's the right thing for you to do for your self care and taking care of yourself. And um, that's hard. That's so hard, but it's the next right thing to do. And uh, it's funny, we, um, on Martin Luther King Day, I was able to go to, finally, go see Frozen 2 with my family, with my kids, and I was blown away. It's precious. It's really precious. And um, my husband was kind of grinning at me during this one part of the movie, Anna sings a song and it's called The Next Right Thing. And that's kind of been my mantra like the past year. I've said it here and there on here and um, is sometimes we're drowning in decisions. We're just drowning, we're drowning, maybe not decisions, but in depression or in anxiety or just so much going on that you can't, I'm such a planner. I, I push way out into the future. Um, and I get caught up in planning too much or in trying to control too much in the future. Uh, my husband is military and I really don't get a lot of control over much of anything for the last 11 years. And I think uh, that's my overcompensation is just trying to control whatever I can in the future, right? Um, I've backed down off of that once I've started therapy in this last year and my mantra has become the next right thing. What is the next 
right thing that I can do for myself and my family, my life, my business. Not 15 in the future, and I'm not saying you shouldn't plan or you shouldn't look ahead. Those are all good things. But when you're drowning, what is the next right thing? And Anna sings a song in the movie called The Next Right Thing when she's just uh, the lowest of the low and she's dealing with grief that is essentially, it's too deep to climb out of what it feels like. And she says, what is the next right thing? Even though I can't see through till tomorrow, I can't even see the next few minutes because I'm so devastated but I can do the next right thing right now. That next step, that next breath, what is the next right thing right now? And my husband was just grinning at me while, while she was singing it because that's, that's my new thing, is with the next right thing. Maybe this new job you're gonna take, you're looking at it like, but is this my career? Do I need to, t is this, do I need to change careers? Like, what if, what if this new job opportunity isn't, a massive career change what if it's just the next right thing what if opening your business you don't see you want it to be your full-time job you want to support your family with it but it's so scary and there's so many things going on and you can't figure out how it's gonna work but what if just the next right thing is just opening up your Etsy shop or writing that first pattern and putting it out there it's just the next right thing, right? It doesn't have to be the decisions, 42 decisions down the road. I'm not sure if I made any sense with all this, but I just wanted to make sure you knew that even good things have weight. Even good decisions carry weight. And acknowledge that and make sure you take care of yourself through that. And like I said, sometimes taking care of, care of yourself is fun and good things. Sometimes taking care of yourself is really hard things. But it's the next right thing to do. And then after that moment, do the next right thing. And sometimes, step by step, you can, you can get yourself in a better place just by doing just the next right thing. So, um, love on your soul this week. Today, treat yourself like you would treat your child or you would treat your best friend who's hurting or who's dealing with guilt or grief or just a really big but good decision and is torn with the anxiety over it. Take care of yourself. And I don't know, um, I hope this helped somebody out there. Y'all are awesome. Thank you so much for being my friend and my support through everything. And um, I love y'all. <laughs>